Day number 11 of the 12 days of MLB rankings is here. The top 30 pitchers in Major League Baseball. Not every single team will be featured in today's video. It is just simply the 30 best pitchers in my opinion. Big shout out to my boy James Shiano for helping me out with these rankings. He's the pitching whisperer. You can go check him out here. But without further ado, let's get going into the top 30 pitcher rankings. Getting the top 30 start at number 30, George Kirby of the Seattle Mariners. Really quiet, good rookie year out of George Kirby. That makes me believe he can be a top pitcher in Major League Baseball next season. Through 130 innings and 25 starts to an 8-5 and five record with a 3.39 ERA, a whip at 1.208, and a FIP at 2.99. He finished sixth in the Rookie of the Year voting, striking out 24.5% of the batters he faced. And what's really great about Kirby, he doesn't walk anybody. 4.1% walk rate as a rookie is fantastic. Kirby definitely could be a frontline starter for the Mariners. He's a really good pitcher. For the 29th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, gotta throw some love towards Nasty Nestor's way. Nestor Cortez, I, I don't get it, I don't understand why, but he's a good pitcher. He finished eighth in the Cy Young voting last year. 158 innings, 2.44 ERA with a whip under one at 0.922 and a fit at 3.12. You watch Nestor's stuff, he's a crafty lefty. He's fun. He's got a crazy windup. He's herky jerky. He mixes things up, but he's incredibly effective. So as much as you maybe don't want to believe in Nestor if you're not a Yankee fan, numbers the last two years have been really good. It's time to throw some respect on Nestor Cortez's name. Next up at number 28, I've got Alec Manoa of the Toronto Blue Jays. Manoa had a really good second year after a strong rookie season. Keeps him in that top 30 for sure. 196 innings, which is fantastic. A 2.24 ERA, a whip under one at 0.992. One thing that was a bit concerning and why he's a little bit lower, the K rate was low, but the walk rate was also low. So while the ERA and whip did look great, the FIP was a little bit higher, a full run at 3.35. Still very good. Still one of the top pitchers in the game, but his stuff did fall off a little bit towards the end. So I'm going to be a little cautious here and put him at number 28. Coming in at number 27, Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Another really good year for Logan Webb. 192 innings, 2.9 ERA, a whip at 1.159 and a FIP at 3.03. He finished 11th in the Cy Young voting for the Giants. He's one of these guys who doesn't have big strikeout numbers, only 20% last year, but he also limits walks. He's a ground ball machine. He's a very good pitcher. That's what Logan Webb is. I don't think he's one of the nastiest, but he's definitely one of the better ones. Just missing on the top 25, at number 26, I've got Joe Musgrove of the San Diego Padres. If Musgrove pitches like he did against the Mets in the playoffs, he could be a top 10 pitcher. While Joe Musgrove isn't a top 10 right now, overall in the season, it was a great year for him in San Diego. 181 innings again, 2.93 ERA, a whip at 1.083. It was almost an identical year to 2021. Actually, shockingly identical. The FIP was higher again than his ERA, a FIP at 3.59, and we did see the K rate go down a bit at 24.9%, but he also limited walks better. So what you need to know, Joe Musgrove's a really good pitcher. Getting the top 25 started at number 25, Yu Darvish, also of the San Diego Padres. You finished eighth in the Cy Young voting last year in 194 innings, 3.1 ERA with a whip under one at 0.95, giving him a FIP at 3.31. The K rate did drop a little bit to 25% last year, but again, he limits base runners with only 4.8% walk rate. Darvish has so many different pitches. He's one of the most fun pitchers to watch because he really does go out there and pitch. He's getting a little bit older, so there is some regression coming, but he is still a top 25 pitcher for sure. Just inside the top 25 at number 24, Tyler Glasnow of the Tampa Bay Rays. We only saw Tyler Glasnow pitch six innings last year, but they were spectacular. He struck out 38% of the batters he faced, but that's obviously such a small sample. You can't really take it for too much. He obviously has the stuff to be a top 10 pitcher in the game, but the Rays are probably going to baby him coming back from a big surgery, missing a lot of time, and the fact that he's probably going to end up being traded as well. But the strikeout stuff is there. He obviously is nasty on the mound. Some of the most fun stuff in all of baseball. I'm excited to see him healthy and pitching for the Rays in 2023. For the 23rd best pitcher in Major League Baseball, Christian Javier of the Houston Astros. What a season for Javier. 148 innings, 2-5 ERA, with a whip under one at .94, and a FIP at 3.16. Now, he did kind of fluctuate between starter reliever roles at times during the season. We saw him dominate in the postseason, finish the regular season with a 33% K rate. Does tend to walk guys a little bit more than you'd like, so that's why he comes in a little bit higher in today's video. At number 22, another Tampa Bay Rays pitcher, Shane McClanahan. McClanahan started the year so strong, fell off a little bit towards the end with some injuries, scared us a little bit, but McClanahan still has unbelievable talent. In 166 innings, a 2-5 ERA with a whip under one at .926 and a FIP at 3.00. Finished sixth in the Cy Young Award voting, made an all-star team, had a K rate over 30% with a walk rate under six. Shane McClanahan's nasty. One of the best left-handed pitchers in the game. Just missing out on the top 20 at number 21, I've got Max Fried of the Atlanta Braves. Fried is just straight up a good pitcher. The stuff may not jump off the page, but you're getting consistent innings out of him. Limits base runners, doesn't give up home runs. Like, he's just kind of like boring good. Talent-wise, from a stuff perspective, not the best, but results-wise, you have to give Max Fried respect because he does it year after year. 2.48 ERA last year, 3.04 ERA in 21, 2.25 in 2020. He's just a really good pitcher, but because of the lower K rate, I keep him outside the 
top 20 just ever so slightly. Getting the top 20 started at the number 20 spot, Dylan Cease of the Chicago White Sox. Now, I know he had an unbelievable year last year, finishing second in the Cy Young Award voting in the American League. 2.2 ERA and 184 innings pitch with a whip at 1.109 and a FIP at 3.10. Struck out 30% of the batters, but he did walk 10%. If he can just get that control down a little bit, oh my goodness, Dylan Cease has the potential to be one of the best pitchers in the game, no doubt. For the 19th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, Cleveland Guardians ace Shane Bieber. Bieber is still a really, really good pitcher. It just feels like he fell off because he isn't at that Cy Young dominant ace level that we saw in 2020 or 2019. But Shane Bieber was still really good with a 2.88 ERA and 200 innings last year. Coming off of injuries as well, that's huge. A 1.04 whip, a 2.87 FIP, striking out 25% of the batters he faces while only walking 4.6. Those numbers still translate to a really good pitcher, a guy who's been elite, one of the best in baseball before. Hopefully with another strong year in 2023, we can see him climb back up this list. Coming in at the number 18 spot, new ace of the Seattle Mariners, Luis Castillo. Oh, Luis Castillo is so back and I love it. I love it. 150 innings last year, 2.99 ERA with a whip at 1.08 and a FIP at 3.07. Castillo made the all-star team with the Reds early on, pitched great with the Mariners afterwards, bumped up that K rate to 29% with them to finish for a 27% K rate on the year. Also lowered the walk rate in Seattle to 6.4%. That changeup is absolutely disgusting. Castillo could be a fun Cy Young Award pick next year for the Mariners. Next up at number 17, I've got Julio Rias of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Rias had another really good year. 175 innings, 2.16 ERA, whip at 0 .960, FIP at 3.71, ERA plus at 194, and he finished third in the Cy Young vote. He was an absolute beast. He doesn't walk anybody, doesn't give up hits. The strikeout numbers were down to 24%, but that doesn't worry me. He's still one of the best pitchers in the game. He's filthy. Just missing on the top 15 at number 16, I've got Zach Gallen of the Arizona Diamondbacks. If the season stretched just a couple weeks longer, Zach Gallen probably would have ended up winning the Cy Young. He came on so strong to end the year, finished fifth. Getting Brent Strom in Arizona was huge for Gallon. Had the best year of his career thus far, but always been a Zach Gallon guy. Happy he finally broke out. 184 innings, 2.54 ERA, with a whip at .913, best in the National League. Doesn't give up any hits, only a 5.9 hit per nine last year. His K rate was 26.9%, with a walk rate at 6.6. .6. Gallon is the man, and I'm so glad he finally broke out. Getting the top 15 started at number 15, a pitcher that kind of defies what we expect out of our aces now. Not your prototypical ace, but let's talk about Framber Valdez. Oh, gotta love Framber. Fifth in the Cy Young voting, all-star MVP. It may not be cool to watch Framber Valdez, but boy, is it fun. He just attacks hitters, makes them put the ball in play, ground balls all day. That curveball is awesome. He eats innings, 201 innings last year, three complete games, a 2.82 ERA with a whip at 1.157, a FIP at 3.06. And all things considering, he basically had the best K rate of his career outside of the COVID year at 23.5% and lowered the walk rate to 8.1. Gotta love Framber Valdez. For the 14th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, this guy still got it. Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers. If Kershaw could give us more than 130 innings, he's easily in the top 10, maybe even in the top 5 again, but we haven't seen him go over 126 innings since 2019. It's been a while. That being said, those 120 innings are absolutely elite. Did you guys know Clayton Kershaw had a 28% K rate last year with a 4% walk rate? That was disgusting. He also had a 2.28 ERA with a whip at .942 and a FIP at 2.57. How does this guy keep being so good? If only he could stay healthy for a full year, he could probably be in the Cy Young conversation again. Speaking of a guy who, if he stays healthy, will be a Cy Young candidate, at number 13, Spencer Strider of the Braves. Strider has some of the nastiest stuff of any starting pitcher in Major League Baseball. Finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting last year, 31 appearances, 21 starts, 131 innings, an ERA at 2.67, a whip under one at .995, and a FIP at 1.83 is nasty. We did see him get hurt, though, at the end of the year. Something to keep an eye out for. He is a smaller pitcher who throws absolute gas. Those guys tend to not last as long, but the K rate was unreal at 38.3%, which basically negates that 8.5% walk rate, which is just kind of whatever. Strider's stuff is unbelievable. Even if he loves to make excuses every single time he loses, the guy's nasty on the mound. Just a little bit outside the top 10, at number 12, Brandon Woodruff of the Milwaukee Brewers. Woodruff was so back. Once he found out about blood thinners and they got him on it, Woodruff immediately went back to his old form. 153 innings, 3.05 ERA with a whip at 1.07 and a FIP at 3.08. Struck out 30% of the batters he faced, walked under 7%. The stuff that you're accustomed to seeing out of Brandon Woodruff, he did again. Pitching is so loaded that I feel awful leaving this guy outside of the top 10 too, 
At number 11, Kevin Gosman. Oh, Kevin Gosman's so good. Developed a little bit of a slider last year too. Incredibly effective. 174 innings, 3.35 ERA with a whip at 1.237. A FIP though at 2.38. That's nasty. He struck out 28.3% of the batters he faced, walking under 4% for what was one of the best K to walk ratios in all of baseball. The splitter's nasty. The slider's good. Kevin Gosman's just straight up a beast. Now to get the top 10 started at number 10, Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Aaron Nola. Nola's really, really good. He had that weird 2021 where the ERA wasn't good, but obviously he was still a solid pitcher. And the Phillies didn't necessarily do him any favors again in 2022. Finished with a 3.25 ERA, a whip under one at 0.961, but yet finished 11 and 13. If you ever need more proof that wins and losses for pitchers don't matter, Aaron Nola is a great example of it. He made it to the World Series and he had an under 500 record. That's crazy. Nola finished with a 29% strikeout rate, 3.6% walk rate for, again, one of the best K to walk ratios in all of baseball. Through over 200 innings for the third time in his career after 180 in 2021. Nola is such a workhorse. I hate that he's on the Phillies, but man, is he good. At the number nine spot, I've got Aaron Nola's teammate, Zach Wheeler. Wheeler definitely took a step back last year after finishing second in the Cy Young in 2021, but that step back really wasn't very big. He was still nasty. Only threw in 153 innings though, due to a slow start to the season, 2.82 ERA with a whip at 1.039, a FIP at 2.89, walking less than 6% of batters still, still a really good K rate at 26.9 despite it going down. A fully healthy Zach Wheeler in a full season gives you 200 plus innings. He's an innings eater who's got nasty stuff. One of the best pitchers in baseball. Wish the Mets kept him. Speaking of Mets pitchers, coming in at number eight, newly acquired right-handed pitcher, American League Cy Young Award winner in 2022, Justin Verlander. The fine wine. He only gets better with age. Justin Verlander literally might have had the best season of his career last year. 175 innings after not pitching in basically two seasons, which is crazy. 1.75 ERA. A whip at 0.829 is nasty. FIP at 2.49. Best ERA a plus in Major League Baseball at 220. Like I said, he won the Cy Young. K rate of 27.8%. Walk rate of 4.4. Nobody was hitting home runs. Nobody was getting hits against this guy. He was filthy. By the way, the last two full seasons that Justin Verlander has pitched in, he's won the Cy Young. The year before that, finished second. Ever since he got to Houston, Justin Verlander's been a different beast. So happy he's on the Mets. Big jump up here coming in at number seven on today's video, Carlos Rodon now of the New York Yankees. Where the Rodon haters at? Because you guys are stupid. He's so good. He could easily win the Cy Young next year for the Yankees. His stuff is that nasty. The Giants got even more out of him. The last two seasons for Rodon, he's thrown 310 innings, which is shocking for what a lot of people like to call an injury guy. 2.67 ERA, a whip under one at 0.998, and a FIP at 2.42. Over this time, he has a K rate of 34% and a walk rate of 7. That is one of the best pitchers in baseball. I don't know what you need to look at. Fantastic move by the Yankees. Carlos Rodon is a fantastic pitcher. Definitely inside this top 10. Just outside the top 5, coming in at number 6, Garrett Cole. While I think Garrett Cole still is elite, it's just that there are a ton of elite pitchers. What happened at the end of the year last year when he started to get roughed up a little bit is a little bit concerning. It felt like Cole wasn't as dominant as he used to be. That being said, what he used to be was unbelievable. Now, he's still really good. Garrett Cole, though, obviously threw 200 innings again for the fifth time in his career. 33 starts, 13-8 record. Led Major League Baseball in strikeouts of 257. 3.5 ERA, though, a little bit higher than you expect with the 3.47 FIP and a whip over one at 1.017. He's still really, really good and probably will return to that top five pitcher form, but right now, I'm going to keep him outside the top five ever so slightly. Getting the top five started at number five, New York Mets pitcher Max Scherzer. If it wasn't for injury last year, Max Scherzer 100% could have won the Cy Young. He made 23 starts, 145 innings, 11-5 record with a 2.29 ERA, a whip under one at .908, and a FIP at 2.62. If there was ever a doubt if Max Scherzer still had it, well, I think he showed it in 2022. You just got to forget the bad playoff game. It happens. It's just unfortunate it was in one of the biggest games of the year for the Mets. But outside of the COVID year, he was top five in Cy Young voting every season since 2013. K rate was still good above 30% at 30.6 and the walk rate was still elite at 4.3. Max Scherzer is still one of the best pitchers in the game. Definitely top five. For the number four spot, fun little place here to put Shohei Otani, one of the best players in baseball. It's so funny to think that Otani is an elite pitcher as well, along with being an elite hitter. Cause like we just, this has never been seen before. Otani's a freak. And on the mound last year, oh my God, he was incredible. He finished fourth in the Cy Young voting. 2.33 ERA in 166 innings with a whip at 1.012 and a FIP at 2.4. Shohei Otani struck out 33.2% of the batters he faced, walking only 6.7%. If he does that, Shohei Otani is possibly going to be the best pitcher in baseball. And he also hits. 
This guy is nuts. Shohei Otani is the coolest player baseball has ever seen, and he's one of the best pitchers in the game. For the third best pitcher in Major League Baseball, National League Cy Young Award winner Sandy Alcantara. Sandy is nasty. Sandy is awesome. Second year in a row throwing over 200 innings, 228 last year, the most in Major League Baseball. He threw six complete games is nuts. 2.28 ERA, a whip at .980, 2.995. While he doesn't have the crazy K numbers like you see from some of the other guys, his K to walk ratio was still pretty solid. He was the best pitcher in the National League last year, and let's be honest, the best pitching seems to be in the National League. Expect Sandy Alcantara to have another great year. Thank goodness the Marlins actually paid him, although as a Mets fan, hate it, but good for you Marlins fans, you have something to cheer about because this guy's nasty. Just missing out on the number one spot, coming in at number two, I've got Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. We saw Corbin Burns eclipse 200 innings last year, huge for a guy who had basically been a reliever for most of his career. But in 2022, 202 innings, 2.94 ERA, a whip at .965, and a FIP at 3.14, struck out the most batters in the National League, finished seventh in Cy Young voting in the NL, a 30% K rate with a 6% walk rate. The pitches are nasty. You saw Corbin Burns win the Cy Young the year before. You know all about him. The dude is an animal on the mound. Brewers know something about pitching. Corbin Burns, living proof of it. Second best pitcher in baseball in my eye. Because coming in at number one still, the best pitcher in baseball, even though he's not on the Mets, Jacob deGrom of the Texas Rangers. If Jacob deGrom pitches a healthy season, there will not be a pitcher better than him statistically. It's just not going to happen, especially in Texas in that huge ballpark. The big cause of concern, of course, is will he be healthy? Jacob deGrom hasn't thrown more than 90 innings since 2019. Jacob deGrom right now is healthy. As long as he stays healthy, you'll be disgusting. I mean, just listen to the numbers that he put up last year in 64 innings. The RA was a little bit high for Jacob deGrom, which is crazy to say at 3.08, but he had a .746 whip, a FIP at 2.13. He struck out 42% of the batters he faced, walking only 3.4%. Jacob deGrom gave up 40 hits in 64 innings. He only walked eight batters. Watching him come back, his stuff still had incredible life. He was nasty. Took no hitters in perfect games deep deep into games sometimes. It's just all about health with Jacob deGrom. If he's healthy, he's the best pitcher in baseball. Talent-wise, there is nobody better. And as sad as I am that he left the Mets, I'm wishing the best for him out in Texas. Go win a Cy Young for the Rangers. I'll be rooting for you. There they are, the top 30 pitchers in Major League Baseball, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. It really does help support the channel, as well as don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. Tomorrow, we are dropping the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. You aren't going to want to miss it. It's an absolute banger. Follow me on all my social media at Giraffnik Mark. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You know the drill from here on out. This video right here is ranking the best relief pitcher from every team in Major League Baseball, and this will be a playlist of the 12 days of LMB rankings. In case you have not yet seen them, click them, watch them, go to it. It's good content. Appreciate the support. Tomorrow it ends with an absolute banger, and I'll see you for the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. Bye.